Hi, fashion dolls. It is Wednesday, Wednesday, January 26th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Stevie. We are concluding this interview with part two with our very, 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 very handsome, amazingly talented, dope special guest, Jaded Nerd. He is back to conclude with me. Um, we're going to continue this interview. I'm going to share it so that we can get everybody in here. All right. My little niece couldn't be here with me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, probably tomorrow. Make sure you guys um, share the live. Let everyone know that we're on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our very, 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 very special guest, the one and only Jaden Nerd. And as you guys can see, I have long hair. Yesterday I had a bob cut. But today we got long hair. We decided to do something different. Okay, can you see me? Yes. Okay. I should see you now. Yes, you got it right now. All right, yeah. Sorry about that yesterday. I'm so sorry. You're good. You're good. Welcome back. Welcome back. Can you see me well? Okay. Yes, perfect. I can see you perfectly. I'm loving the tresses, the, the hair, the tresses. I'm loving very much so. Thank you so much. I always try to switch it up and do something different. Yesterday I had short hair today. I said, let's go longer. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, that's what it is when you have the versatility. You know what I'm saying? You can kind of rock whatever you're feeling. And, and with fashion, um, it's still creative. It's expression. You know, just like when we create our content and we're expressing ourselves. So I think you can't help but to be that way. You get what I'm saying? I think it's super cool. Absolutely, 100%. And yesterday in the interview, we talked a lot about mental health, protecting your peace. Right. We talked about, you know, um, you brought up something excellently before we got cut off yesterday. And that was, you know, it's okay to say you're attracted to someone um, just to let them know. But, you know, don't blur the line. You know what I'm right. saying? So, yeah, that's where we stopped. So um, let's shift the gears here a little bit. Um, I just recently seen some more of coverage you did on Tasha K and things like that. Other Boris Johnson, you were big on covering Boris Johnson as well too on your channel. So in the realm of politics, I literally had to give up on that because it became exhausting for me, even mm -hmm. after the election, like trying to cover it, to, you know, the counting and the vote counts. It was just, it was just a lot. I'm like, okay, he's dragging this thing out. So I literally had to just take a break from it. So my question for you is how do you, find that in between, like that, that balance of, you know, having to cover the stories. Because I know for both of us, you know, from the journalistic aspect and doing the coverage and content creating, it can be literally exhausting when it comes to politics. You know, when it comes to things like Christianity and things like that, when it comes to politics, that can be even more of a pain in the behind or thorn inside. So my question is, how do you find that that go between that in between and protect your mental health at the same time? Uh, one good way that I'm able to navigate that and protect my mental health. And I really think that's a great question. It's thoughtful, very thoughtful. Um, it's the, the benefit of having diversity. We just talked about versatility, right? You rock your short hair, you rock your tresses, you might choose a different color, you might choose a natural style. And I think that it is imperative for me to have that ability as well. That, that ability to say, okay, yeah, I am covering this. It's trending, it's heavy, um, but then, you know, just like it's been Tasha K all week, right? But I just did a video about UK Parliament. Just something totally off the beaten path. Uh, there could be something that may be LGBTQ, right? Uh, there could be something that operates underneath the umbrella of entertainment. Could it could it could just be something else? But I think having the other forms of content is so helpful because while your brain is 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 uh, processing comments or feedback or reaction to those videos or those live streams or blog posts, you have the benefit of, you know, having a different energy speaking on something else. So you can kind of 
D, you can kind of have a distance. You can separate that for a moment. Because like to your to your point, it can feel uh, uh, enveloping. Like it's just like you're you're taking it on like this coat, you know. So I feel like if you do not have the benefit of versatility and and the ability to have other things going on. If you fixate upon one, you put your blinders on, then I do believe you may set yourself up to, you know, to fail in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, because I know for me, after this election, after he dragged this thing out, I'm just like, I'm never covering politics again. I'm just going to stick to celebrity stories and fashion and beauty because politics, it is it can literally drain you. Right. And even the first lady, Michelle Obama, said, I kind of have to give up on this. Like, I'm going to have to throw in the towel, you know, when it comes to this. I, I'd rather not run as president. People were trying to get her to run as president. She said, it's overwhelming. It's too much. When it comes to politics, it, it literally would drain you. And the thing is, you have to find that go-between to be able to balance your mental health and covering these stories. Absolutely. You know, don't. I've heard people say, cover the story and then don't cover the story, meaning, you know, make sure that you're taking time for yourself and protecting your energy and your peace and your mental health and your sanctity. Because shout out to Scotty by nature, who's also on YouTube. Um, he spoke about that as well, too. He said, I have to take care of myself. There's days I'm not going to be able to give you guys content all the time or videos every single time because I know the subscribers, the viewers, the our supporters expect us to keep giving us giving them content. And we know it's busy, but we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves too. That's a great point. And I think he's amazing. I like watching him. And I've watched him he's he's been building it, you know, the right way. You know, putting that work in, you know, being consistent. You know, he's still working. Like, he, he's a good example of, like, look, just put the work in, and what's for you will happen for you. And I think he makes a great point about the mental health because, and I don't think it's done maliciously most of the time. I think there is a genuine excitement uh, because people are searching for what they connect with. So they people connect with you. They connect with Scotty, you know. They connect with me. And sometimes there's that, that crossing the line a little bit because they just don't understand how taxing it can be. So when you have people like Scotty and, 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 and again, looking up to him and others, you know, he's right. And it's good to have that uh, transparency with people. So they understand, you know, Hey, sometimes people don't know unless you tell them. And then you can kind of like a uh, uh, coach better behavior. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't have to admonish and you don't have to make people feel alienated. They just have an awareness where they're saying, you know what? I respect he, she, or they so much more because they let me in and they let me know how they really felt. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. 100%. And I'm also going to bring up another name, uh, Funky Dineva as well. Um, he said something in one of his videos because he said he was sick. This is when this whole pandemic started circulating. He said, I was feeling bad. When you tell, when your body tells you to do something, listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are taking care of your health. Make sure that you are staying safe out here because it literally can become draining to you. you don't push yourself too hard. I remember I did one episode with a sinus infection. And after that, that was the end. I said, no more. That, <laughs> that was the end right there. Because, you know, as a woman, women, we try to push ourselves to keep going, you right. know, just to keep going. But I'm just like, at a certain period of time for me, I'm going to have to take a break and step back from it. After I did that one show, my body said, no more. You need to rest. You need to literally rest. So when your body tells you to rest, rest. And that's why for me, I, po I do my posts. I post my fashion, my interviews clips or whatever and then after that i go back check my messages notifications reply to comments or whatever and then i put my phone down right. back in my purse because sometimes you have to unplug you have to release because reading these stories as we talked about yesterday it can be draining to you like oh god not another like you know so many deaths so many things that have happened throughout 2021 to 2022 mm -hmm. it's been crazy it definitely has and i mean if you have even an inkling of like empathic anything where you feel on any kind of level, you know, it does take a toll, you know, so it's, it's, it's good to just know your limit or threshold is a better word because we all have a different threshold and some people intake more or less 
It's not a knock either way. It's just a, 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 a realization. So once you're able to be aware and you know your threshold, just make sure, you know, it's just akin to like, hey, you go out, you have some drinks. Do you know your limit? You understand what I'm saying? So that way you may enjoy responsibly uh, because we choose to do this and, and we immerse ourselves, then we have to understand that threshold and then we navigate it. So um, I think it's, it's, it's necessary. And, and one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say, um, it's been eye-opening because my approach in the beginning is definitely different now. Um, I didn't have the sensitivity or the compassion for how it feels to be talked about until I got talked about. Or I didn't have the sensitivity or compassion to understand how it feels to be the hot topic or to be, you know, all up in the search engine until it happened to me. So now when I do approach things, there is that in the back of my mind. And I think it's important that we kind of keep it because we are talking about people, you know, and it's so easy to strip that away and forget the humanity and yeah i didn't mean to go off on a tangent but you know we're just having a good old time <laughs> right I, I know that feeling kid it's like is this real and i asked tony that in an interview yesterday before i started the interview with you yours is at four his is at three i said when you're acting when you're on set like do you feel that this is real even for us content creators when we take that microphone mm -hmm. or we press that button and we go live you know, it's just, and your supporters come in, I mean, just tremendously. They come in like, hey, we're happy to see you. Hey, Jaden. Hey, Miss Stevie. Like, it's overwhelming at times. Like, wow, I can't believe yeah. I have the mic now. I have this platform. Things that I've wanted to say that go on in the world that affect people. Not just me, but my audience, my following as well, too. Things that they've been through. To be able to have the microphone to say the things that they are thinking. It's powerful. Yeah. And as you mentioned yesterday, um, you can either use that tool for good or you can use that tool for bad. And some people abuse that tool. And so we use ours for good because we bring awareness to things. And we have this platform where we educate people, we inform people, because our people, especially black people, there's so many misconceptions. Oh, black people don't read. We don't do this. But we educate each other. And that's why my thing is this, each one teach one and the yeah. next generation and the next generation after goes on to know these things. Because even at school, Black History, when it came to that, which is slowly approaching next month, February, uh, people still don't know about other inventors out here or con Black content creators in general. And I'm just like, wow, it's, it's so many. We have to let our people know, especially for us as African-Americans, as Black people. So, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, right, yes, right, right on, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why when I created my platform, I, I said I wanted something unapologetically black. I want my audience, because I have a very diverse audience, white, black, age, whoever comes and watches this platform because they love the topics that we talk about. Right. They love the, the beauty, the glamour, the fashion aspect of it. It's not just that, but they love the fact that there's someone out there that is speaking and being a voice for them. The voice for the voiceless. That's what I like to say. And us being the content creators, we are literally that. Because there are people out here who are afraid to call out things out loud when you have a content creator that is basically saying what they're thinking and unapologetically and effortlessly. Yeah, that's what it's about. I think when you get to that point, you really can start operating like in, in your purpose. You know, because like you said, you have that connection with the audience. You have the purpose, that destiny, that mission statement. Um, and I think it's super duper helpful. So, yeah, I'm, like I said, it's just great uh, just to find more people that are starting to be more like minded. We run into the opposite all the time. So it's amazing. Welcome, Misha. Welcome, Misha. Welcome. Welcome to the dollhouse, my love. Uh, we are here with Jaden. I think that's one of your C. Your support system, we just talked about that. Your supporters are coming to check out this interview, this platform. So it just goes to show you, it's a mix of your supporters and minds. They all come in to see us and they're loyal. 
one hundred percent. They they love your channel. What even I get the notifications. I'm a loyal supporter as well too. So whenever he, you post the video, I get that notification on my phone. It'll be buzzing in my purse, and I'm like, okay, Jada just posted a video. Conscious just went live with Larry. Like it's different things. Like I'm always making sure that I come through at least and try to support. But that's how it should be with content creators, and not you know the vision. But we all have the same purpose yeah and that is to educate and inform people on things because our people again that misconception all oh, black people don't read they don't know this they don't know that when we're the smartest out here so yeah and, indeed and it's just so much opportunity for us to just reach so many people we all got our own audience and everybody benefits you get what i'm saying yeah 100 percent 100 percent all right, Fashion Dolls, it is about that time before we conclude this interview with Mr. Jaded Nerd. We're going to do two games, and the first one is called The Rapid Five. And Jaded has to tell me five things he can't live without. And the second one, he's going to get a little spicy with me. Not like that, y'all. He is going to turn the tables, and he is going to ask me questions that I've never been asked before in interviews or whatever. So it's uncensored, unfiltered in the turn the table segment, but we're going to start off with the rapid five. Okay. Five things you can't live without. Uh, pizza is number one. Okay. Uh, Whitney Houston music is number two. Okay. Not good. Uh, video games is number three. Okay. Um, Shade, the concept, the the essence of shade, it has to exist. Therefore, I don't exist. And uh, number five that I cannot live without, uh, I'm going to say glaucoma medication, allegedly. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a they chronic condition. Been. It's chronic. You treat it every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen that is his top five it is time to turn those tables and the new viewers the new the new followers um oh my goodness we're yeah we're definitely about to get spicy <laughs> he's gonna ask me some questions and we'll take it from there the new supporters the new viewers you guys get to know about me and what i like all right jaded um, okay, well, this one is a little serious, but it'll help me get it out so I can kind of like get into your mode a little bit. So it's not too serious, but it's just, I just want to get okay. your mindset a little bit. Um, how do you feel about the roles between, you know, you know, the masculine, the feminine, in any capacity? You know what I'm saying? Male, female, 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 male, male, all that, everything, trans, everything's beautiful, right? You get what I'm saying? Yes, but the dynamics of those those uh, uh, antiquated roles of what masculine was and is, and what feminine was and is, and when I observe relationships, it's almost like there has been a a a a, a flip of poles, or the poles have reversed in terms of expectation, and then how they carry themselves and interact with one another. So, like for you. As a woman, how do you feel about this perceived flipping of masculine and feminine and how, you know, people interact with one another, love one another, treat one another? You understand what I'm saying? How do you feel about that? Well, I'm going to start off by saying this, that there is definitely patriarchy, mm -hmm. you know, for Black women in relationships. We've been programmed that what goes on in this house stays in this house. If you're experiencing abuse or trauma, don't talk about it. That's one thing. I'm not trying to deflect from this. But yes, times have definitely changed. Like it's not the 1950s anymore where the woman stays at home and takes care of the kids. You've got men doing that. It's not just a girl thing. Like times have definitely shifted when it comes to gender roles or mm -hmm in the spectrum or different things like that. Um, I Would I date a feminine man? Yes. Now, if he starts wearing my eyelashes, then we would have a problem. But <laughs> um, 
I don't mind my guy being a little bit feminine because right. it lets me know that you're human. Like when it comes to crying, crying is not just a woman thing. It lets me know that you're human. Yeah. We talked about this in one of my interviews just the other day when it comes to toxic masculinity. Black men, especially cishet black men, some of them have been programmed to uh, not cry, to be ultra masculine, hyper masculine. Don't cry, man. You look like a punk. My thing is this. I think crying makes you human. Yeah. And just that in itself is not just a girl thing. But as far as anything else, freedom of gender expression, I'm here for it. Okay. But like I said, if you start trying to wear my eyelashes, then we're going to fight. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Even when it comes to women, for me, experimenting with fashion and different things like that and changing it up, you know, one day it'll be a tomboy. The next day I'll be feminine. Um, I love it. I love it. Like you mentioned in the beginning of the interview, it's about versatility. Yeah. And that's what keeps a relationship lingering and spicy because not everybody wants to just, okay, we're going to make love. We're going to go to bed. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then just like that. No, switch it up. Make it spicy and interesting. Right. Uh, love should be about adventure, but with the same person, not cheating on the person, but with that same person. Make it spicy and interesting. That's what makes a relationship flourish. So yeah, I want to ask you a question, if I may, um, and it kind mm -hmm. of falls under a couple of umbrellas, but I think it's really interesting, and it kind of falls under colorism, it falls under featureism, and it yes. kind of falls under fashion on a global scale. So I think I got a good one for you. Okay, I watch a lot of videos and a lot of documentaries. Okay, and I watch a lot of stuff about the chase to get melanin and to look melanated. Conversely, I've watched a lot of content and it's interesting because it's East. There's a Western perspective and an Eastern perspective where there is a, 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 a preference for lighter skin and the market for lightening and, and, and appearing to be more fair skinned. And it's not just exclusive to like Jamaica or countries in Africa, but it's in India and in South Asia and places, and I found it fascinating where in one part of the world, there is a, a, a preference for melanated features, you know, full lips, full, you know, the brown skin, you know, the bronze, the tan, right? Beautiful. But conversely, there is a preference and a market. They inject themselves to appear lighter to the detriment of their health. Why do you feel like we're so fixated upon the aesthetic on such a superficial level when it comes to beauty? And I've learned this working in the beauty and fashion industry, you know, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Um, we, the, the beauty industry is a multi-million dollar industry. And women will go to extreme lengths to look beautiful. And I know for me, I would never change my feature. I've features. I've looked the same since I've been in high school, my nose, my lips and all. Um, women go, especially women of the other kind, y'all know which kind I'm talking about. They go to steal our features because we are the trend. We are the culture. You know, they there's women that look like this. Oh, okay. I, I could never okay, be you that. You better come on props, I, okay? Yeah, I, I could never be that. <laughs> I could never be that. Right. But they want our features because we are the trend. We are the beauty. We are the makers. So when it comes to women like the Kardashians, mm -hmm. y'all know I was going to go there, the genders, they will go out here. And, and yes, it is a craze. To, it's the pro closest to the proximity of whiteness because for years, we as black women, we have been told that we need to change this in order to fit in or, or what I like to call a simulate because it's your, your melanin is not beautiful. And especially in the modeling world, um, I remember Naomi Campbell said something in an interview or was it Tyra Banks? One of them said something and they said, I've been told, no, your look is not what we're looking for. So yeah, the beauty industry they have a certain look, and that look is Western European, European Western looking, tall, thin, or like I just showed this is what they see as beautiful. She's a beautiful woman, but I can't come past that because I'm a black woman. And we know that massage noir, which is the, you know, defeminization of black women, where they say your features are too masculine, like Serena Williams, Michelle Obama, those would be prime examples of that because 
for years, Michelle Obama's been in the White House. They've called this woman a gorilla. They've called her every name in the book because she looks too, quote unquote, masculine. Whereas if it's someone like a Sweetie or Zoe Saldana, they can get away. Or I'm going to take it even a step further, Meghan Markle, who's close to the proximity of whiteness. They will blend in with what society sees as beautiful. Whereas if it's someone that is my complexion or a, a T.S. Madison's complexion or a, let's say Oprah, for yeah. example, these women's complexion, uh, they won't see it as desirable. They won't see it as beautiful. Right. So yeah, there's definitely a divide when it comes to that in the beauty industry of what people see as beautiful and what their standards are. And my thing is this, black is beautiful. Yeah. Black women are the trend. And when it comes to y'all white women stealing our features, I'll say this as well too. Y'all want our jazz, but y'all don't want our blues. Y'all want to be black and look like us. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to our problems, black problems, black struggle, y'all don't want to take that. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, Kylie, the protest broke out for George Floyd. Um, Kylie is one of them. I was obsessed with using her makeup products. <laughs> I threw it all away because I'm like, you, you're out here black fishing, sis, at this point. Mm -hmm. I, when the lips kit, when her lip kits first came out, um, that was something that I really wanted to invest in. And I got one. And then Jeffree Star came out with his products as well, too. And then I found out what he said about Jackie Ina. I said, oh, that's going in the trash, too. I know it's a lot of money I spent on it, but it's not worth it. I can support Black-owned cosmetics companies and still, you know, set the trend as well, too. But exactly, they don't want our struggle. They want to be Black when it's convenient for them. But they don't want Black problems. Yeah. They will turn on that whiteness quick. They will turn on that whiteness quick. They want to look like us. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the things that we go through yeah. from being pulled over because there's a broken taillight on the side of the um of the car or different things like that, or you fit the description of, oh, they will turn on that whiteness quick. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I'm glad you asked me that question because colorism is something that we talk about that it's been taught in the black community. It's been taught, it's, and it happened during slavery. They would put the darker-skinned slaves in the field, the lighter-skinned slaves in the house. They were more desirable. And NASA would get to you faster. Yeah. I know you like fashion and beauty. And I want to give a shout-out to Rihanna and what she's done with the brand with Savage Fenty and the makeup and things like that. Do you see, or who do you see as that next black woman that could be a billionaire that can give us another beauty brand, another makeup brand. You get what I'm saying? So that way it won't just be singular. We can start adding more women to the party. Do you think you see anybody in that realm or do you think it may take a little bit more time to get another black woman that, that can give us another billion dollar makeup brand and also geared towards Black women, dark skinned women, because, you know, those who express, you know, concerns about foundations and things that match the tone and not having to mix and not having to to give alchemy and do all types of you get what I'm saying, child. So my fault. Go ahead. I'm kind of laughing because I, I've been there before. I'm like, OK, I don't want to put on this makeup shade because it will probably make me look like a ghost. I <laughs> I have to make sure, even when it comes to models backstage, you know, having to bring their own foundation and things. But the women that I see, they are, some of them are actresses. So I'm just probably going to say they should come out with a beauty brand. And if they were, it would become a hit instantly because of their notoriety. I would have to say Angela Bassett. Mm. Um, she's beautiful. She could. She was talking about actually doing skincare at one point. I'm like, well, come out with it. Kelly Rowland is another one I could yes. see her coming out with something. Mm -hmm. Jackie Ina. She even though she does her candles and her YouTube channel, I, if she comes out with a product, she did release an eyeshadow palette for Anastasia Beverly Hills. If she came out with a full range of products, it would be a hit instantly as well too. Mm -hmm. So those are the three women that I could see doing this. Another one that I could see doing this, um, Sunkissed Alba, she's also on YouTube. If she, cause she's known for her curly hair. If she came out with hair and makeup products for women of color, that would be huge as well too. So yeah, I could see it. Yo, that's what's up. Well, that's what I had. I was just a little bit curious. I said, what can I think of that would be relevant and kind of cool? But I, 
I learned because you gave me some channels I can check out. So yeah, thank you for that, for real, sincerely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'm glad you talked about it because I, I think you've talked about it on your platform as well, too, as well as uh, Conscious TV. Um, shout out to Justin J. King of Reads. He talks about colorism all the time and massage war and all of these different things out here that go on within the black community. Yeah. Colorism doesn't just affect black women, but it affects black men as well, too. Um, I remember Clifton Powell, Clifton Powell, who was an actor. Um, you guys know him as Pinky and Friday. Um, he said in an interview that one of the directors told him that he was too dark for this role. Mm. Those were his exact words. So colorism is not just a black woman thing, but it's a black man thing too. Yeah. Our brothers out here, black men face it as well too. And it's even in the jail system. There's colorism there too. You wouldn't believe it, but yeah, it's it's there. It's there. I had somebody tell me before we wrap it up, because I was I was telling them where I'm trying to manifest myself, because I see me doing an entertainment. You know, I'm not going to be famous, but I can do this, and it could be a good living, right? And I'm like, it could be L.A., it could be Miami, manifesting it. And somebody said, well, don't do L.A. because you're not light enough. There, You have a hard time. And he wasn't trying to say it disparagingly to me. He was saying it in a way like he felt like he was looking out for me. But he was saying that the preference on specific tones and features and perceived attractiveness was so prevalent that he felt that I would have a difficult time assimilating into their culture and into their way of life. And he felt that I would have an easier transition um, going to Miami just because of the uh, colorism on the West Coast. And that culture of, you know, everything is about looks and everything is about how you are. And you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Beverly Hills. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just found that quite interesting. It was, it was fascinating. You understand what I'm saying? And to that person's point, it, it totally makes a point because that, that does happen in LA. You know, black actors go through it all the time. Mm -hmm. Is and black content creators as well. You, it doesn't matter what area code you're in, you're going to face some sort of oppression. Somebody's going to look at you. And we're now in a day and age where everything is technology based. With like here, Instagram, everything and scrolling down Instagram, it can be stressful too because it's just you know you see pictures of Tiana Taylor. You're looking at her. You're looking at her body, and and it puts a lot of pressure on the regular everyday person mm -hmm. to look this way. And I'm like, half of the time these people don't even look like this on magazine covers. And and I think it was T-Boss from TLC. She said something in an interview. She said sometimes they go back in and they photo airbrush those photos. So not everybody looks like they look. Like, I don't have a filter on now, but I want people to know that this is what I look like. This is this is beauty. This is what beautiful is. You don't have to use a filter or anything. Now, I have used it every now and again in my stories to try to glamorize the image of me wearing makeup or whatever, but other than that, no, every not everybody looks like that. And not 24-7, trust me. Amen to that. Nah, for real. Like, amen. That's the perfect like punctuation to, to that. You know what I mean? For real. All right, ladies and gentlemen, any last questions for Jaded before we let him go? Make sure you guys please go subscribe to his YouTube channel great content and again it's that nostalgia that people are looking for you bring that on your channel perfectly well i appreciate that perhaps you'll bring me back and we can maybe talk about some stuff you know that relates to maybe even just beauty and entertainment and and how things have changed because you know it's it's, it's pretty cool so I've, I'm, I'm honored i thought you asked very good questions i think you do a really good job of researching but it's it's not like you just crammed a bunch of information and it's given okay well i know this and i know this there's a genuine interest in the questions you ask so you find a way that you connect because i watched a couple of your interviews and i think it's good that it can it, it comes off very genuine and it comes off very much like you really want to know and it becomes conversational so i just want to just say thank you I want to give you props. I think you're very good at this for what it's worth. So thank you for, you know, interviewing me. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. And you're welcome to come back to the dollhouse anytime. Oh, yeah. You know, I'll be back. Absolutely. We can drag <laughs> Boosie. If you keep taking them shrooms, oh, we'll be back. We shall convene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, special thanks to Jaded Nerd. Tomorrow we have comedian Rudy Rush and Friday we have something very, very special from the group. As yet, we have Mark Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. That's Friday. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Thank you all so much. And Jaden, is there anything you'd like to give? Any words of encouragement you'd like to give to your followers, your supporters? Misha, Spark, Misha Peck says, good. I caught this live after a long work meeting. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I would just say, just keep, uh, keep, keep on trucking. Shout out to Eddie Kendricks. But uh, sometimes you don't see the progress you're making. And it's, it's, it's relative to where you are. So something larger, bigger than you sees the progress because it's looking down on you. So sometimes you just have to have that faith. De keep doing it because then you'll have an opportunity to say, you know what, I actually got there. Sometimes you don't even realize the progress you're making. Just keep doing it. You understand what I'm saying? We'll all get there. Whatever is for you is going to be for you. Exactly. And it just goes back to what you said in the beginning, manifestation. God puts it out there. You achieve it. You believe it. It's coming true. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much. And thank you again, Jaded. It mm -hmm. was so good talking to you. Your energy is amazing. Thank you so much. I'm good. Yeah, you were great to me, so I'm good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Style by Stevie with our very special guest, Jaden Nerd. Please go like, share, and subscribe to his YouTube channel. And this interview will be up on my YouTube channel. And be on the lookout for clips. We love you, and we will see you guys tomorrow with Rudy Rush. I'm going to try not to laugh, y'all. I'm going I'm to keep it together for Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, take care. All right, y'all take care. Thank you. You are.